Hi there, this is Steven Gonzalez. How are you doing today? Welcome to the first video in the version 2 Mac-centric fundamental sequence for Reaper for Voice Talent. The purpose of this and the following videos is to basically journey together, taking a, a cursory, a surface-level view of Reaper, from downloading and installing the program to recording, saving, and rendering projects. And so with that, downloading Reaper. That's what's next on Reaper for Voice Talent. In this video, we're going to be looking at downloading Reaper and installing it along with its user guide. We're also going to be looking at two other things, the SWS extension for Reaper and the Repack add-on, along with their user guides. Now, about this point in pretty much every video in the fundamental sequence, we're going to be having what's known as caveats, which is basically a warning which will keep things from blindsiding us. In this sequence of videos for version 2, we're going to be looking at Reaper version 6, but more importantly, we're going to be looking at Catalina. If you have a Mac OS version that's before Catalina, there may be some things that may not show up exactly as you will see in the video. However, just remember that Catalina is a Mac OS that basically was started from scratch with security in mind. And so there are a bunch of hoops through which we need to jump in order to make Reaper work fantastically. And that's the purpose of this sequence as well. Now, if this is your first time within this video, especially if this is your first time within Reaper for Voice Talent, do me a favor and like this video. And also subscribe to this channel and, and make sure you hit that notification bell setting it to all so that you don't miss anything. And while you're at it, watch the videos all the way through because there's so much information in them, even with them being reduced in size from version one to now. So maybe you need to repeat watch them every once in a while. And as always, if you have any comments or questions, drop them in the comment section below. And with that, without further ado, let's get started. Reaper is not found at reaper.com and it's not found at reaper.net. It is in fact found at reaper.fm. And this .fm should tell you something about Reaper. Any website that ends with a .fm has to do with multimedia, whether it's streaming multimedia, or editing multimedia, or processing multimedia. And that's true with Reaper as well. And if you notice, whenever you look at the website, everywhere Reaper is indicated, it's all capital letters. That is because Reaper is actually an acronym. It stands for the Rapid Environment of Audio Production, Engineering, and Recording, and that's exactly what it does. Now, before we get into downloading Reaper, let's look at the Reaper website header and its seven links. This is going to be important as you go along and learning Reaper that these seven links are always going to be there for you. Starting with the upper left-hand corner, download Reaper. Well, we're going to get to that in just a few moments. Then we have down here, download user guide. This is what we're going to be doing in just a few minutes. And then in the middle here, we have purchase. This has to do with Kakos' three-tier licensing system. And we're going to be getting into that in a future video in this sequence. And then over here on the right side, we have resources. Really, the Reaper rights or Reaper heads or whatever you want to call us Reaper users. This is what we call the stash. This is where things like themes reside or uh, presets for effects or even some really graphically gifted people will mock up something that they're suggesting to be in future versions of Reaper. And um, it lets the community see what's going on. It's very, very cool. And finally, we have the lower right-hand corner. We have the videos and forum sections. <laughs> I don't know how many times I'm going to say this. Reaper is meant primarily as a music production software package, a multi-track digital audio workstation, DAW, if you will. So is Pro Tools, so is Audition, so is Cubase, so is Studio One. All those multi-track DAWs are meant primarily as a music production software package. In the videos and forum sections, it reflects this music production kind of purpose, but there are things in there that can be very applicable for VO use, and it's worthwhile going in there. We're going to be mentioning them in just a few minutes again. So now that's six links. Where is the seventh link that I promised? Well, it's this guitar pick. Anytime you see this header or this banner in a Reaper website page, when you click on the guitar pick here, It'll bring you back to this, the front page, the first page of the Reaper.fm website. 
And now with that, let's go to downloading Reaper. We hit this link and we're greeted with this website. And you'll notice that Windows and Linux is on the left and Mac OS is on the right. And you'll notice that it's split up in versions from OS X 10.5 to .13 is the 32-bit. Then you have the 64-bit, which is meant for .5 to .14. And then you have Catalina. This is what we're going to be using. And Kakos did a really, really wonderful thing. Kakos is the manufacturer, if you will, the programmer of Reaper. They actually took the time and the effort to get Reaper notarized, quote unquote, notarized by Mac. So this is what we're going to be using. So we hit download, we hit save file, hit OK, and then it's going to ask me, OK, downloads, and sure, downloads is fine. And like that, it's loaded. OK, with that, let's go to download user guide. And here we have a bunch of PDFs that I'm going to be introducing you to, starting with the RUG, the Reaper user guide. Now to download it, you can do one of two things. You can either right click on it, or you can do the control click if you have a two button mouse, or if you have a pad, you can do the two finger double click thing on the pad. Either way, you greet it with this menu and you can say save link as. Now I'm using Firefox for a reason that has to do with basically the tabs here, but um, you can use Safari and download that PDF just the same. You can say save link as, and you can save it wherever you want. At, <laughs> check this out. As of the time of this recording, the RUG is over 400 pages. In fact, I think it's over 420 pages, if I remember correctly. Anything you have, insofar as a question for Reaper, can probably be answered in the RUG. Another, say, 10 to 15% can be answered in either videos or forum. And then the last part, you'll just have to Google it. The point is this. Don't reinvent the wheel. If you have a question about Reaper, then chances are somebody else has already had that question and you can find that answer and not spend the time or hours even sometimes trying to figure it out if somebody has already figured it out before. What's new in the version six? This is basically called a change log and it's a very interesting read if you want to spend the time to do so. It seems like Reaper comes out with a new version every so often and even if it's just a little tweak, they'll put out a new installer, a new DMG for it. And this is where you will find out what the changes are, basically. Now, let's take a look at the topic-specific guides here. We have the Quick Start, the Reaper Troubleshooting Guide, the ReFX Guide, Multi-Recording Paths, which is incredible. And then you have a Sonar to Reaper, basically a conveyance PDF. The Quick Start, this basically has a bunch of keystrokes in it. And speaking of that, in the description below, you're going to find a link to a PDF that has a bunch of keyboard shortcuts in it. And I really would like for you to maybe consider using that instead of your mouse, especially if you have something like a Contour Design Shuttle Pro V2 or a Logitech a G13 controller or whatever it happens to be that you can assign keystrokes to a certain key. That way you don't have to use the mouse as much, which is actually slower than using keystrokes. So Quick Start will help you with that, as well as that PDF guide. Reaper Troubleshooting Guide. This is well worth the read if you get into trouble. And in fact, if you go to the Reaper forum, many times they're going to say, they're going to ask, did you check the troubleshooting guide first? Because chances are, if you have an issue, you can find it in the troubleshooting guide, the answer. Re-effects. What are re-effects? Well, like EQ, compression, um, limiting, uh, reverb and, and delay and all this good stuff. That's a re-effect because it's in Reaper. So that's kind of the cute way of labeling and, and kind of branding their effects. And it is a very comprehensive guide to all of the inboard default uh, effects. Now, multi-recording pads. We're going to be coming back to this one in a few videos. This is one of the best parts of Reaper. This is the ultimate safety net if you have an external hard drive. And it shows you how to set up basically recording once and storing in two different locations. That's what the multiple recording pads is all about. So it's basically a built-in backup. Really, really cool. And it shows you how to set that up. All right, so that's the Reaper site. Now let's go on to the next topic here, the SWS or Standing Water Studios extension for Reaper. Now, what exactly is a Standing Water Studios extension for Reaper? Well, everything you, well, almost everything you do within Reaper is known as an action. 
And it could be something as simple as, say, saving a document, or in this case, a project, recording a media item, uh, trimming the left edge of that media item, even something as esoteric as, say, inserting four points, two on either side, of a time selection within the pre-volume effects envelope inside of a track. And yes, there is such a thing as that. I use it all the time. There's a bazillion actions within Reaper, but the SWS extension adds to it. Uh, we think it's somewhere between 33 and 45% more actions, and some of them are very, very useful. We only have one download link, so this is the one we're going to be using. And we hit that DMG, we save it to the same place as the downloads here, and there it is. Okay, now let's talk about the SWS extension user manual, which is right here. Just like for Reaper, you can right click on this link and say save link as, or however we do it in, in Safari or Google Chrome or whatever other browser you use. Or we can simply click on it and the PDF will pull up inside the browser. It is just as comprehensive about the SWS extension as the RUG is for Reaper. It is well worth the read. And now finally, let's talk about the Repack Package Manager for Reaper. This thing is to scripts and to uh, editing processes and all this good stuff as SWS is to actions. Reaper users know that Reaper is a very good DAW, but we seem to think more and more now that the SWS extension and Repack installed with Reaper makes it into a superior DAW. And uh, so that we're gonna be downloading this into the downloads directory. So we click on this and we put the dilib, dynamic library, we we're gonna save it. And then we're going to save it into the downloads directory or downloads folder, and that's it there. Now let's talk about the user guide for a second. Unlike Reaper and the SWS extension, the user guide for Repack is actually a web page, if you will. But it does explain how to install it, how to use it, all that good stuff. And we'll get into that later. Okay, let's go ahead and minimize this and start installations. The first one is Reaper. So we come over here to downloads, we hit the Reaper DMG, and Catalina is going to uh, mount it and to, you know, take a good security look at it. Okay, now that it's mounted and it's security checked, we can drag Reaper 64 into the application's folder shortcut. Now, here's the deal with Catalina. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. If it's not notarized, probably it won't work. But even if it is notarized, sometimes it does not work. If it is not notarized, what you need to do then is to pull up the application's folder manually, this window here in Finder, and then drag the application into that and not use the shortcut. So then let's try Reaper 64 going into application shortcut just to see. And it appears that it is indeed going to work. And it is copying. Okay. Reaper 64 is now installed. Do not engage it yet though, because we have a few things to install before we run Reaper. And that actually, the Reaper run is going to take place in the third video of this sequence. So let's go ahead and eject the DMG now, which will close the installer window, of course. Now, let's go to the SWS extension DMG. And that is going to mount. I'm going to hit agree. And now it's ready to rock and roll. But notice that the user plugins does not have the folder icon. That's because user plugins is not created yet. Here's the deal. We can go and create library application support, Reaper user plugins. We would have to authenticate every single time we put something in there. Or we can create the user directory, library application support, and then we would create Reaper and user plugins. And that's what we're going to do. So we go to go. Now you'll note that library is not there. If you hold down option, you'll see that library pops up. So we're going to click on that. And now we're in our home directory under library. And then we're going to go to application support. And then under application support, you'll note there is no Reaper. 
So what we need to do is actually create one. Go ahead and get this out the way here. We're going to say new folder. We're going to say Reaper and make sure it's capitalized. Then under Reaper, we're going to generate another folder and we're going to call this user plugins with the U and the P capitalized. Now from here, we can take this dialib and drag it over to the user plugins directory. And we've just installed the SWS extension dialib. Let's go ahead and eject the SWS extension DMG and go forward with the uh, repack, which is already a dialib. So all we have to do is take this and drag it again into user plugins. And it is just installed just like that. You may have noticed in Firefox that there were three other tabs that we didn't touch yet. Those are going to be handled in the next video. Now, in the description below, there will be a link to the Reaper website, to the SWS extension website, to the Repack website, to the Maccentric Fundamental Sequence playlist, and the link to that document with all those keyboard shortcuts. This is Stephen Gonzalez with Stephen Gonzalez VoiceOvers, wishing y'all all the best, and I'll see y'all in the next video.